Hey guys, this is Matt Workman, and in this video I'm going to be showing you the previous tools Technocrane 25 that I created to help me in my previous work. I'm going to start by going through how I created the crane and how it works, and I'll finish up by showing a quick demo of the crane in action. So let's get started. So first we'll go to my website and download the Techno25 Maya file. When you open it, you'll get something like this. This is the Techno25 crane that I modeled. To animate it, there's two controls. First is the base, you can move that around and key it, and second is the arm. Behind the scenes of this model, there's an extra attribute called telescope on the base control that as you change it, you see the arm telescopes in and out. It goes from 7 feet to 25 feet. As a previous artist using this crane model, you don't have to manually control the telescoping in and out. Behind the scenes, there's a script node that you can see here. And what that does is it controls the telescoping of the arm for you. All you have to worry about is the placement of the base and where the camera arm is going to be. So, real quick, I'll move this this locator here. And as you change the timeline, you'll see that the, the arm telescopes to the correct amount. So now that you've seen the basics of how the crane works, uh, I'll show you how to use this crane in an actual previous scene. So what I've done here is I've already created a little mock-up scene here. You can see a, a pretty huge green screen in the background and a guy standing on the second story. Uh, I've already gone and animated a little camera. I'll hide the crane for now. And I'll show you that move right here. So if you look at this, I'll make it bigger here. Uh, the move that I created starts off in a profile like this. It kind of rotates to the front and then we slowly reveal where this guy is standing. And you can see in this view, you know, a typical, you know, three-quarter previous over overhead, you can see the little camera moving here. It's this guy. But it's sort of unclear exactly like what it's doing. And that's why I created the camera crane. So how do we put this camera crane into this scene. Well first we'll, uh, we'll pull it back out and we're going to start by selecting the two controls here and just roughly placing the base and the head at the same time. So most important is to grab this head control here, kind of move it up. Let me go to the top view and I'm going to place this where it <coughs> it's right above the camera like that go to the side view, make sure it lines up. I haven't modeled the remote head here, so in this case I'd give it about this amount of room. And about here. And that's a good placement for the head. And then the base could probably catch up a little bit. Something like that. So now that we've blocked the first placement of the Techno Crane, Next we want the arm to follow where the camera goes, and to do that we're going to grab the, the control for the crane head and the camera and hit P. And what that'll do is it'll make sure that that camera locator on the crane follows the animated camera I have. Of course this is, this is not exactly uh, how you would do this shot but you can see that the arm is at least trying to follow where the camera is going. So the second step that you would do is, and this is what the key grip would be doing in real life, is deciding when would you move the base to make the shot happen. So on this shot, the camera is kind of swinging around and then starts pulling back and then it starts coming down. So for the first part of the move here, we grab the base and I would keyframe that. And I think until about here, maybe about frame frame 40, it's still, the base still hasn't really moved too much. You can really get a lot of this done on the arm. Um, but then as you start coming back like this, the crane is, is going too far back. So what I would do then is pull this back, and drop a keyframe there, and see how this looks, see if this looks realistic. So we're telescoping around and we start to come back. It's probably a little bit a little bit fast. 
something like that, and then we're just pretty much a straight, a straight, a straight camera move back, and the crane will boom down. So maybe by frame 190, will be something like this, and by the end, will be something like that. So let's see how this looks all together. So it's too far. You can see that the crane has gone past its uh past its point that we start to lose it here. So I'll reset like this. It's by 190. It's probably like a little bit closer. Let it catch up. And by here, this is too far back. Maybe something more consistent. Great, so that looks pretty good. So that's how you use the Techno 25. Hopefully that's not too complicated. And once you have it all set up, you can start doing these sort of playbacks from different angles. And if you're in a pre-pro meeting, um, you can show this to the producers or the production designer, who's ever with you. And you can bump them off as MOVs and send them out to people's iPhones or iPads or whatever from different angles, whatever they want. And with the crane in place, you know, it's a lot more clear to everybody what's happening. And from a logistics side of view, you can start to figure out, you know, how much dolly track you're going to need, how big is the stage going to have to be, you know, when you go back to this view, you know, with the, the actual camera, you start to know, you know, how, what parts of the screen are we going to see, what part of the set, you know, how fast does this camera move, and, you know, the most... The most important part of the previs is really to bump this shot off and send it to the director or his editor so that they can start to figure out timings and things ahead of time. Finally, here's a top orthographic view, which most of the technical crew will appreciate. Uh, they can work from this to lay the dolly track, and you know the art department and other people can use this to say, you know, this is where the set piece is going to be built and the camera's going to be here. You know, and the gaffer and the DP can be like, okay, well, we're going to put like our key lights over here, and we're going to need space lights on this side, you know, that sort of stuff. So, that's it. I hope this video was helpful for those who are trying to use either this crane or a similar technique in their work. And, um, you know, feel free to leave a comment on the blog or directly on the video. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.